Welcome to Special Day, everybody. This is Sports News. I'm Joe Boric, and this is going to be our quickest trade recap as it is on the Sabres Mafia. Buffalo Sabres is, of course, they only made one move, which was giving Robert Hag the hitting round and pounding defenseman to the Florida Panthers so he can join his former teammate, Claude Giroux. And back for that, they got a sixth round pick. Honestly, in a seller's market with some of the guys that got a fourth round pick and a fifth, I'm a little bit surprised that the Sabres didn't get now. Now, I'm is Robert Hag's value more of a 5-6? Probably, because he's a good round and pounding hitting defenseman that uh, blocks shots, can pin guys against the boards. But but what we know, he is what he is. I liked him during his time here in Philadelphia because I just knew he was what he was. He's a bl- shot-blocking defenseman that can hit guys and pin them against the board. He's never going to wow you at doing anything, and he's going to sometimes make those defensive mistakes because he's not the most efficient passer, but he does have a rocket of a shot. He did have a 20-point season here, I think, with 15 assists and five goals, if I remember correctly. Um, And uh, he's a guy that does have a rocket of a shot. The problem is getting it on net, but when it comes to the Panthers, I'll do that in the video when they are obviously having a physical defenseman like him that can block shots. They're good depth pieces to have for the playoff run, and they have Lindholm starting, so he could end up starting for them. So that's also why, because of their injuries, I'm a little bit surprised they didn't get a fifth or some, something like that. Because for the Panthers, Robert Hag, when you look at their line pairings, they had Lindholm starting, who only has played in his sixth game, I think, last game he played, or fifth. He's probably going to come out of the lineup. But overall, getting a six-round pick, obviously, for someone like Robert Hag, um, when the Buffalo Sabres are still a rebuilding team, um, it is what it is. You're just trying to bring in more draft assets of which you can maybe trade a six for another Robert Hag in the offseason if you want to trade that pick. And then you have another physical whatever defenseman that's on the market um, in that offseason. And you can go from there. I mean, I don't, I don't really discount them for trading Robert Hag. It's just I do remember reading early on in this season uh, via an article on The Athletic. I can't remember who his line pairing was, but they were saying him and his partner were one of the most impressive <clears throat> lines on the Sabres early on in the season. So from that perspective, it could be a bit surprising since it's not like Hag's an old player. So if you're a rebuilding team, you could just keep him as a 27 going on 28 um, defenseman that continues to be under third pairing. But obviously, he also makes sense for a contending team as a depth defenseman, and they got guys there in Pissick, Miller, um, Bryson, who they obviously want to continue to play, uh, uh, Samuelson, uh, Jesus, there we go, Yoki Haru, and Dali, <laughs> um, and then you guys have former Phantoms goaltender, who I've always loved, Dustin Kukarski, and Craig Anderson, whom I'm a little bit surprised a team like the Edmonton Oilers didn't come a call for, something that didn't get any help in net. And, I mean, even a veteran like him would have been nice help because they got Mike Smith, obviously, not this year, but he was the big reason why they were able to do it last. And um, he just can't get that mojo back. So, obviously, I don't think they worry about the age number when it comes to their net minders. I'm a little bit surprised they didn't pick up somebody just of that degree, but that is what it is. And I'm a little bit surprised the Sabres didn't trade Craig Anderson, but also keeping a around guys that are veterans like Craig Anderson for a rebuilding team at the same right is also a fairly smart thing to do. And then you also, of course, have Dustin Kukarski back, who started the season really well, went on a down skid and then was injured, and then that's tough to kind of come back when you get injured. So for me, I hope he really gets going because I really enjoyed him here at the Lehigh Valley Phantoms while covering the AHL. Hopefully he continues to uh, grow and maybe be able to be a backup for different teams, even if they are rebuilding teams. Hell, he's still in the NHL. So peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Please continue to subscribe down below or up above on the easy-to-use widget to keep the channel growing to 215 or more. By the end of March, I really appreciate your guys' love and support this far. Could have much more videos on the NHL trade deadline as I continue to do all the teams. Peace out, everyone.